Hey guys, this is Adam from K2 Home Tech. Today I'm going to show you how to build your own LED light strip that's compatible with Philips Hue, Samsung SmartThings, Hubitat, Lightify, and a few other Zigbee hubs. We'll be right back to show you that. Okay, so in order to build your own LED light strip, you're going to need three basic components. You're going to need a power supply, you're going to need a controller that's going to hook up to your Zigbee system, you're going to need a light strip, right? So, the heart of the system is right here. This is your Cladopto C008 LED light strip. Now this one, let's take a look what comes in the box first off. First you get the controller, you get a little instruction manual, and you get a double-sided piece of adhesive to stick it somewhere out of sight. Now on this, this is a C008. This is an RGB CCT. And what does that mean? RGB is obviously red, green, and blue. CCT is for your tunable whites. So you have your warm white and your cool white. They're just like your Philips Hue strips do. So that's what the C and W are down here. The V plus is for your power. Then you have RGB for your RGB LEDs. So the, on the power supply side, you need the standard 5.5 times 2.5 millimeters barrel connector. And I have one of those right here. Just simply looks like this. It's going to plug into the end here. Or you can also use two wires on this side for DC power, so hot and ground. Right there, you can plug them in here, and I'll show you how to make those connections in just a second. So now, how do you know which power supply you need? This is the question that I see a lot of people have. What power supply do I need to get? Now, the power supply is going to be driven by your LED light strip. And we have a few of them over here to give you examples of. This one right here, this IP20 version, and IP20 means it's not waterproof. Right here, your voltage is 24 volts. Oop, there it is. And the wattage of this strip is 20 watts per meter. Okay, so that's all you need to know for your power supply. And I'll show you how to get your figures for that. So it's 20 watts per meter, so it's 5 meters. So that's a total of 100 watts. 100 watts, you take that and divide by your voltage. This is a 24-volt strip. So you take 100 watts divided by 24, and you end up with between 4 and 5 amps is what you need. If you have a 5-amp power supply, what that's going to give you is 120 watts. So 5 times 24 volts is 120 watts. So what we have here... If you look at your power supply, is this one is 24 volts, 24V5A, 5 amps. So this will give you 120 watts. More than enough to power a 96, oh, I'm sorry, 100 watt power, or 100 watt strip. You always want to leave a little bit of room for error in there, uh, a little bit of overpower because you don't want to max the power supplies out because that's what overheats them and burns them up. And also be sure, because these LED light strips come in generally in 24 volt and 12 volt. All right, so if you put 24 volts out of this power supply to a 12 volt strip, you burn that strip up pretty fast. Uh, if you underpower, you could also put a 12 volt power supply on a 24 volt strip. You're not going to see the lights light up. They're going to be dim. If they light up at all, you're going to get a lot of problems with it. So make sure you match your wattage and your amperage and your voltage from your power or from your LED strip to your power supply. The controller will handle up to 6 amps per channel, 15 amps overall, so more than enough for a couple LED strips, one LED strip, more than enough for this. And obviously if I say anything wrong or if you have any questions, please comment down in the, in the comments down below and I will address them if it's possible. So, how do you do this? It's actually really simple. You take your your controller, and right here I have this is an IP20 version of the strip we sell. We're also going to be in the comments down, or also going to be in the, the description for you, so you can see these. So this one's 24 volt. It's RGB CCT. It's the same one in that bag. You get your six wires on here, and you get your six wires on your controller. To make these connections in this controller, you simply push in. 
just use a small screwdriver like this push in stick your wire in let it up it's connected now black is the power wire so that goes to V positive and the rest of them are just color coded so R is to red green to G B to blue Then your two whites, so cool white and warm white. Cool white's white, and warm white is yellow. And last one, warm white is yellow. Yeah. I always give them a little tug to make sure they're seated all the way. There you go. And that's it, that's the connections made here. So now the LED strip is connected. So this is the same strip that is on the kitchen cabinet lights that I showed you behind the TV. Uh, so I already have it added here to my Philips Hue system. I'll just show you a little bit. You get all the same colors. You get your tunable white, so here's warm white. Here's your middle with both whites, and then here's your cool white. Obviously they're dimmable. If I dim it all the way down, down to like about four percent and back up to a hundred is about fifty back over to yellow or warm white again back in your colors and they're dimmable as well same as you'd expect in your Philips Hue system okay now the advantages of doing this you get the controller power supply LED light strip it's cheaper than just buying the Philips Hue light strip. In the Philips Hue light strip, you get two meters. And then each additional meter is 20 bucks for an extension. And the, so for three meters, it's already $100. To do five meters, you'd be at what, about 140 bucks. With this setup, you're at 30 bucks for the light strip, 30 bucks for the controller, you're at 60 plus a power supply. You might have one laying around, you might have one you can use. Um, the power supplies you can buy pretty 10 15 bucks, maybe sometimes $20. Uh, the other advantage to this, too, especially on this one here, this is an IP20 strip. So, if you see, it's cuttable about every eight inches here, every six inches, maybe. So, you can cut this and put it and cut it to size. You, then, you take the rest of the strip that you cut off, and then you have other options to connect them. So, if you wanted to do uh, a right angle like around your TV or something like that you could use one of these corner brackets and if you wanted to Go end-to-end -end with a little bit of a gap in between like you were trying to you know go around something you got to use one of these in these simply The cut end of the strip would slide right in To here you just gotta make sure your, your color your, your you match up your colors here um, But it would go straight into the end here and you can connect two pieces of strip or if you want two pieces of strip with no gap in between, you use one of these. This is, you just slide both ends of the strip in here and it connects both cut ends. And these we got in four packs. And if I had a screwdriver, I could open this. These are actually pretty tight, but, but this one just connects end to end with the strip. One end here, one end here. So if you have two pieces of a cut end, you can still use that whole thing as a, as a, a strip. And then we have this single end cut end. So let's say you wanted another controller with a piece of your strip that's cut. And let's say that the strip you have doesn't have another wire like this on the other side. You would buy one of these and then hook this up to your controller and then hook that up to your light strip and you can use another piece of your cut strip 
with another controller to be by a five meter strip you could put two and three two and a half whatever it is you wanted to use divide it up that way and then the other piece I was talking about was that five meter extension strip here this is what I ran behind the TV and, and across the pantry this is just five meters of this cable so you can run your strip across one set of your cabinets hook it up to these wires run the wire and then hook it up again to the strip so it gives you a little more flexibility and longer lengths of gap between where you want to put things. Um, and then to quickly go into your waterproof ratings. So this one is IP20, non-waterproof. This one is IP67. And this one has the silicone sheathing on it, a lot like the Philips Hue Strip does. Um, this one... You can actually submerge this one up to three meters, so about 10 feet. You can submerge this one underwater and it, it wouldn't uh, short out. So this one is uh, pretty serious waterproof. This one does not come with any type of adhesive on the back because it, with the silicone sheathing, it's just simply too heavy. Uh, so what you could do is either get some um, Gorilla Tape's really good for holding these up. That's the strongest tape I think I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> or, uh, you know, some, some other way of holding these up. They're not like it's super heavy, but it's stronger than than these than a 3M tape would hold. Or it's too hard for the, the 3M tape to hold that. Um, so that's why it doesn't come with adhesive on the back of it. And then IP65 is with the little uh, shield across the top, a little bit of silicone across the, the lens here. But still the back has 3M tape. It's a little bit heavier. Um, doesn't dissipate heat as well. Right, so I think that's about all we had to cover today on this one. Uh, if there's any questions, comments, concerns, anything I missed, anything I forgot, any other questions you have, just leave them in the comments and I'll try and address them as best I can. If I said anything wrong, please correct me in the comments down below. Um, thanks for watching, guys. Have a good day. So here in the kitchen, we have an example of putting our LED strips up on top of the cabinets. What we have here is we have one LED strip, five meters, running across the top of these cabinets one power supply and one controller. Now off the controller I split it with another one of our five meter extension wires through the pantry along the wall on the inside so you don't see it when you open the door then out the wall to the other side the cabinets here. On this side it just plugs right into the LED strip and run it around to this side of the, the cabinets. Now these are also mounted in a 45 degree angle uh, aluminum channel Number one, to help dissipate heat, and number two, to keep the light focused up and back in the kitchen so it doesn't bleed over in the rest of the kitchen, which is the way it looks best in here. So the LED strip behind the TV here is one 5 meter strip, one power supply, one controller. This took all of 5 meters to go all the way around the TV. This is a 70 inch TV. It's a little bit older, so the bezel is a little bit thicker, but still 5 meters to get all the way around it, top, bottom, and all four sides. The controller I have down behind the cabinet, so I have just the extension wire for the LED strip run down through the wall, out the bottom, and over to the controller with, with the power supply or by an outlet. Keeps it off from behind the TV.